Hi, I'm Dave, and today I'm going to show you how to use a Tech MDO 3000 to verify a power supply design. We're going to look at the efficiency of the system, and then some of the switching losses with the FET, and finally the RF emissions. Thankfully, all of this is included in the MDO's ability, and so uh, we'll just need the one instrument. Before we get started with any of the testing, let's take a look at our setup and what we're going to be working with. First, this board is a Texas Instruments BQ24650 EVM. It's their evaluation board standard. You can order it online for the BQ24650, which is a solar-powered battery charge chip. So you can charge a lithium-ion battery from a solar panel. The best part about that chip is there's so many knobs you can turn in terms of the cell voltage versus solar cell voltage, and it has maximum power point tracking. All great features, but today we're just going to look at it as a simple switcher. I'm going to use for voltage measurements the tech, the standard tech probe uh, that comes with the MDO 3000, which is a TPP 1000 probe. No big deal. Uh, this, however, is a nice piece of equipment. The TCP 0030 is a current probe. You can put a wire through here. It's got little jaws too, and it will measure the current that goes through there. AC or DC doesn't matter. Great piece of equipment. Um, very helpful when looking at power supplies. Uh, here we have a differential probe. It's Tektronix TDP1000 uh, and that's got its mating, its connector right here that I have already soldered to the board. But this unit can do differential voltage measurements where this has to hook up to earth ground because this is earth grounded. This guy can take positive and negative to be floating away from earth ground. Great for measuring voltage drop across MOSFETs and that's exactly what we're going to use it for today. Uh, standard lithium ion battery, no big deal. And then I have a power supply to simulate what a solar panel would be for this board so I can give it, you know, the 12 volts it needs at half an amp. Finally, we have this Beehive 100C, um, I don't know what you call these, loop antennas. Really, you can make one yourself online. I looked at it, but these are just so much easier to buy. You can kind of sweep around and see where the RF noise is. So we'll be using that when we're looking at emissions. That's our kit, uh, and then let's get started with playing with the scope. So here's our scope setup. Uh, it's pretty simple. We have the differential probe in channel one, the current probe in channel two, the voltage probe in channel three, and then the beehive antenna in the RF input. Uh, I had to use the N to BNC connector there. Uh, and then you'll notice on the screen that we have all of them in addition to a math waveform. The math waveform is really pleasant to use when trying to compute power. You can do voltage times current and get power, which is great. Straightforward setup. Um, so let's start taking efficiency data. When verifying switcher designs, efficiency data is probably the most important thing to look at because as soon as you say, I've got a switcher in there, people are going to immediately ask, oh, well, how efficient is it? What, what kind of power can it do? Um, so what you need to know in order to calculate efficiency is voltage in and current in and then voltage out and current out. And then you can calculate power in and you can calculate power out. So we need voltage in which is this voltage probe clipping right on here. I'm just using a decoupling capacitor here as a nice set of leads. Great, so that's measuring the voltage of the input. And then we're going to use this current probe. You see there's an arrow telling you which way current's going. So I'm just going to wrap this current probe around the input current wire. And there we have it. Voltage, current, we're all set. So here we have the MDO set up to take voltage and current data. So on channel three, which is my voltage probe that we just saw hooked up, I have uh, nothing. And channel two, which is our current probe, I also have nothing because no power is being put into the system. And as soon as I apply power, the system gets set up, the power supply regulates itself, and we have, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, about five volts and 200 milliamps per division. So a little over 400 milliamps. And we can use these um, divisions to measure it, or we can just measure it directly. So we can add measurement, and we can make source channel 2, and then the measurement type would be, oops, source channel 2, measurement type would be average or mean. There we go, mean. Okay. And then I also want to add from channel 3, 
I want to add mean. Okay. And there we have it, 436 and 5.11 volts. Or that's the value. The mean would be just very similar. So I can calculate power from there. Uh, what is also handy is that you can use this math function. And we can go dual waveform math. And we set our first source as channel 2, which is current. And then the operator as multiplied by channel 3, which is voltage. So current times voltage is power. And then we can turn that off. And now we have a power reading. Let's see if we can move that around so it's a little bit more clear. Now we have a power reading that's reading, you know, uh, let's see, 2 point something watts. Great. But again, we can do a measure, add measurement, and then we're going to get the mean of the power. This red figure, yeah, 2.24 watts is the power we're getting out. Great. So input power, 2.24 watts. Got it. Now that we have the input power, we can move our probes to the output, which is pretty straightforward. Again, watching this, the direction of this current probe. Current goes through the positive lead to the battery. And then with the voltage probe, we're just going to move it over here. Negative and positive. Good. So now I've got negative positive on voltage, and I've got current, which is all set up, we're ready to go. I do want to note that this measurement is very possible without a current probe. Uh, all you have to do is put a like 0.1 ohm resistor in series with your battery and with your input power, and then you can measure the voltage across that. That being said, doing a 0.1 ohm resistor is much more complicated than just taking this guy, clipping it on, and then you have an accurate measurement. You don't even have to worry about the system uh, taking into account that 0.1 ohm resistor or where you're measuring the current and the voltage. Uh, this does it all without interrupting the system at all. Really handy tool to have. The way we set up the scope here is exactly the same, so I haven't had to touch anything. I moved these uh, points around a little bit so that it's easier to see, but we don't have to change anything. We have our battery voltage here on channel 3, which is already a, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 point something volts, almost fully charged. Uh, and then we've got no current because I haven't applied power, and no power because, again, I haven't applied power. So exact same test setup, all I did was move the probes, which is what makes the efficiency calculation valid. You have to have the same setup going when you're measuring input as when you're measuring output. So let's apply the power and see what happens. There we go. Our current waveform jumped way up, and we see that our average power is 2 watts even. Great. So that sounds good. Um, and this mean is catching up. If we wait long enough, it'll get up to 2 watts. Um, so that means 2.24 watts in, 2.0 watts out, which suggests we have a total system efficiency of somewhere around 94%, which is close to what the BQ24650 should be getting in good circumstances. So um, everything worked great. The current waveform is really easy to use. Everything is wonderful. Now let's say after taking your efficiency measurements, you found that mm, maybe the system's not as efficient as you thought. So we saw something on the order of 90%. Let's say you saw 80 or 70%. You thought, ah, that's really not right. Uh, I want to take a look at the switching losses of the MOSFETs. Uh, that's a very common place for power losses to occur. So why not? Well, you have to look at voltage across the MOSFET and current through the MOSFET, and that can be kind of tricky to do. For instance, with this unit, we have, there's two MOSFETs in this design, both in one package right here. Um, and that's, that's really not ideal for taking these measurements. First, because we have to tack on this right here, this little pigtail thing, this is the differential probe, which, like I said, it can float, so we can measure off of ground the drain and the source of each FET, great. But then to get the current measurement, I had to add this giant loop here. And that's a particular shame because TI made a beautiful layout and everything looked great. Um, and then I come in here exactly on the spot that I shouldn't be doing this and I cut the nice trace right in here and then I we add a giant loop of wire. Um, so this is a high frequency, high current line right here. 
that I came in and made a giant antenna with. And so we'll look at that later when we're looking at emissions. Okay, I've got this differential probe here. Great, and it's got the plus and minus, so I'm gonna need to flip it around. And this is made to plug right in. And I didn't make this piece here. This is something that comes with the diff probe. You plug it right in, and that's nice. That's pretty handy for being able to bounce around and take measurements. And then the next thing is, let me zoom out a little bit here. The next thing is this current probe needs to go around this system. Actually, I'm gonna want it to come, you have to mind the direction of it. So I'm going to want to come over here and I'm using a little solder tip cleaner as a standoff so that it will hold the tail end of this probe. But you're gonna come in, you're gonna slide it on, you're gonna do this all very carefully. You gotta snap that in. And then I have my, I have my tip cleaner over here that holds the back end so it's not putting any force on this because these solder jobs that I've done, while they're good, they're on very small contacts and you wanna make sure that it, it's decent. Okay, so I've got my setup with the diff probe measuring off the drain and source and the current probe measuring the drain current of the FET, which means I can measure the total amount of power that the FET is consuming and look at all the switching behavior, all that kind of stuff. Let's set up the scope. Okay, so the scope is now set up where I've got channel one with the diff probe right here and then channel two with the current probe. Awesome, so if the diff probe is on VDS, the drain to source, and the current probe is the current going into the drain, then I should be able to apply power here, just like that, and there we have it, our waveform, our switching waveform. Channel one, we get, let's, let's take a closer look by zooming in. Here we are. Channel one, here, when it's at zero volts, it's passing current, which makes sense, because when there's no voltage across, the drain and source, that means current's gotta be flowing through it, zero resistance. And then when VDS rises, which means the MOSFET is off, you see the current fall to zero. Now, we see a ton of ringing here and here. I can zoom in a little bit further. And I'm willing to bet that these, this switching noise here, these, this ringing that's going on, is directly related to my layout deviations that I had to make in order to measure these two points. But I can see here that the current goes up and the voltage is very, very small. So I can look all the way here on voltage and we're looking at, it's in the millivolt range. You know, we're, we're probably sitting here at 50 millivolts or so. So I can calculate with uh, the current and with the voltage here what the switching losses are. Um, the same thing can be done is if we zoom in on these on this ringing we can see that we can find that when it is switching well maybe there is a little bit more loss okay so we can take a close look at that now tech sells a mdo3 power application module and so the way we use that is to try and calculate the losses of the system so i'm going to zoom out here and we can go test and we can go application module power analysis and then for analysis we want to look at switching losses awesome so we have here it's measuring the power loss the T on is zero and I'm assuming that's because the voltage is zero and then the T off is 19 milliwatts and conduction losses the total losses being 28 milliwatts um, great so then we have let's see if we can turn it back on we see this math waveform that's computing the power. Now it says low resolution. It's not giving a min and max, which is kind of concerning because um, that's not really giving you much confidence in the measurement. And I assume that's because there's so much ringing going on that it's having a hard time uh, finding it. But indeed, we are saying voltage is a diff probe, current is the uh, current is the current probe, and then we have here we can use the voltage waveform to calculate how much power is lost so it looks at voltage times current or you can say I've got a MOSFET and I know it's 20 milli ohms resistance so I'm gonna tell you that so that you can make these calculations and you see there they're slightly different results 30 versus 28 um, but you know it's fine it works well and uh, this little module here works wonderfully there's a few other features that aren't really effective for switching power supplies but um, if you're interested in that, you should check it out on Tech's website. The last thing we're going to look at today is 
RF emissions, and we're gonna use a spectrum analyzer and this beehive wand to look at that. So um, we want to go to this RF mode, and I know that this switcher runs at 600 megahertz, so um, let's pick our span to be like two megahertz, and our center frequency to be like one megahertz. There we go. And right now, the switcher's not running. I have it not plugged in, so you can see there is nothing really going on. And then when I plug it in, we can see, whoa, look, there's some noise. There's some, uh, definitely some noise that's happening when I wave this wand in front of it. And it's centered around, who would have thought, this giant loop that I made for the uh, current measurement. We'll take a look at that in a minute, but there is more. There are some harmonics going on, so let's take a look at a wider frequency range. Let's make our span 10 megahertz with a center frequency of 5 megahertz. Let's take a look, look at all those. So this, the noise is coming off of here is all over the place. And this would certainly not be encouraging if you had to take this to get certified for FCC or whatever. So um, this is telling us that we might want to work on our layout or there's a concern or at least something to look at. Okay, let's see what happens when I repair the layout and put it back to the way Tech originally designed it. I've repaired the cut and jump that I made. If you can see it, yeah, there it is. So it's a nice smooth trace there. Everything looks good. Not quite as good as new, but pretty darn close. And that means that if I apply power like this, you got power starting to go through and I take my wand and I look at it. Yeah, there's way less noise. Oh, there it is. There's my noise. So it looks the same behavior, but I have to get right on top of it. And even then we're staying at like negative 70, negative 60 dB. And look, wow. Eh, maybe I can get it up there. Yeah, negative 60 dBm. Okay. So you can see that there is still noise being emitted by the system. There it is. That's about as bad as it gets. Who would have thought? Right over the switcher. Uh, that's as bad as the system noise gets right there, um, which, you know, I, I don't feel great about that, but, um, you know, I don't feel awful. Before, I felt awful. So, uh, that's better. It shows you if you had a huge board, let's say it was a big board, it would show you if you're getting a lot of emissions, you can sit there and zero in and be like, oh, was it this switcher, the 3.3 volt rail? No. Is it the 5 volt rail? No. Oh, look, it's a charging circuit. So that's how you kind of use this RF feature in the spectrum analyzer to figure out what circuit might be causing noise and maybe where you would want to consider a different layout or some other scheme. And that's it. We were able to look at the efficiency, the switching losses, and the RF emissions on the BQ24650. Everything looked great, especially after we fixed that layout botch thing that I did with the current probe in order to get it to take measurements. Um, but everything worked well. The BQ24650 certainly passed. I didn't see anything strange, and I'm really glad I have the equipment to make those kinds of measurements. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to check out my other videos talking about scopes and other measurement equipment. And uh, if you have any requests or comments, please leave them below the video.